Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum children. Today we are going to begin with our first lesson of grammar tree. Our first lesson is about the sentence. Now, a sentence, the definition of this word, you have been doing this right from class one onwards and you are familiar with it. Just for a recap, I would like to repeat these words which are already in your book. A sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense. A sentence usually consists of a subject, a verb, an object, or a complement. A sentence is made up of two parts, a subject and a predicate. Now we need to understand the subject and predicate. The subject of a sentence is a word or a phrase that says who or what does something. Example, birds sing, all birds sing. Whatever it is, these are, we are talking about some. So this is a subject. But the predicate is that part of the sentence that says something about the action of the subject. What actually the subject does is known as the predicate of a sentence. The predicate may have a single finite verb or a verb with an objective, adverb, complement, whatever. Example, lions wrote, she plays the guitar in the school choir. There is a verb, there is an object, guitar plays the verb, and adverbial phrase, that is in the school, in the school choir. Now this was the basic introduction that I uh, had to give to you but let's focus on the different kinds of sentences. Now that we all know that sentence is a group of words which gives us a complete sense but kinds of sentences are based on their meaning or uh, they are of five kinds. The first one, as it is mentioned in your book, it is declarative sentence or we can also call them as statements which tell us something about something. Interrogative sentences which are questions. Imperative sentences which are either request or command. The fourth type is exclamatory sentences that is exclamations having exclamations in it. The fifth one optative sentences in which we show our wishes or desire. Now children as we have already mentioned that there are different kinds of sentences Let's go in detail to understand each one of them. To begin with, declarative sentences. Declarative sentences, that is, they declare, they make statements of some kind of observation. But in these declarations, we have two different ways of giving statement. One is affirmative, which we can also say they are positive sentence. The second one is negative, in which we are using negative words like don't, do not, doesn't, didn't, haven't, have not. All these are negative, okay? The book is right in front of you on page one. Please focus on that. 
the very first example that they have given us of affirmative sentence is i like chocolates she likes mangoes is it clear but when we are giving negative sentences they give us a negative word the example is over here i do not like ice cream she does not like mangoes these are negative because we are using no not never whatever when we are using these words in sentences they become negative previously when we were talking about the statements which were affirmative they are positive sentences Now turn the page and go on to page number 2. The second type of sentence that we are going to discuss now is interrogative sentence. An interrogative sentence which is also called a question is formed but by putting the auxiliary verb before the noun or by beginning the sentence with a wh word. an interrogative sentence ends with a question mark children always remember that if you are not giving your correct punctuation marks your sentence will be cancelled it will not be considered as correct so it is a must that in an interrogative sentence you must put a question mark at the end such as the example is already given to you do you like ice cream which game does he play have you understood what i just said this is also a question i hope you are following me an interrogative sentence can be a negative question also example don't you like ice cream Don't you want to go with me to the garden? These are all interrogative but when they include words like don't, doesn't, didn't they become negative interrogative. I hope the second type of sentence is absolutely clear to you. Now we go on to the third one. the third is imperative sentence now imperative sentence express two different things Re requests commands advice or suggestions in these sentences the subject is invariably the second person pronoun you which is generally unexpressed now imperative sentence can be affirmative or negative again example shut the door don't shut the door just like the interrogative sentence we had both type the positive one the negative one similarly even in the imperative sentences we it can be a positive affirmative sentence and it can be a negative sentence I hope it is absolutely clear to you. Now, the only thing that we need to understand here in imperative is when we use the words like please, kindly, I request you to do this. So these are all requests. But when our tone changes into a command, such as go out of the room. shut the door these are our commands now we will proceed to the fourth type that is exclamatory sentence but first of all we need to understand what is exclamatory expression exclamation when we are expressing sudden feelings strong feelings such as alas hurrah how wonderful 
how beautiful. All such words tell us that these are exclamatory sentences. When they are included in a sentence, the sentence becomes exclamatory sentence. And as I repeat again, that they express a sudden strong feeling like surprise, delight, anger, disgust, etc. And I even gave you a few examples earlier. An exclamatory sentence ends with an exclamation mark. All right, once again, I must remind you, just like in an interrogative sentence, we have to put in a question mark. Similarly, in an exclamatory sentence, it is a must that we must end up with a mark of exclamation. Can you see the mark of exclamation at the end of the sentence? Look into your book very carefully. What a melodious song. It's a strong appreciation. How interesting. Again, it's an expression of appreciation. We are putting a mark of exclamation at the end of it. Is it clear to you, children? Let's move on to the fifth type of sentence. That is optative sentence. Now optative sentences are those that express wishes. A desire, a wish. Example is given over here. Long live the president. May you live long. So these are desires, wishes. We have mark of exclamation at the end of it. Children, now you must open up page 3 because we are now going to again discuss kinds of sentences. But this time, these kinds of sentences will be based on their structure. Previously, we had discussed kinds of sentences based on their meanings. Now, we are talking about sentences based on their structure. Now what do we exactly we mean by that? If you look at your uh, book on page 3 on the subheading kinds of sentences based on their structure, see that you have one line here. Read it yourself. You have learned in book 7 that there are three kinds of sentences based on their structure. That means you have already studied this in your previous class. Number one is a simple sentence. Now, a simple sentence, a simple sentence expresses a single complete thought and has one finite verb. A simple sentence has only one subject and one predicate. The examples given below, John is an intelligent boy. In the above sentence, John is the subject. Is an intelligent boy is a predicate because we are talking about John, that he is an intelligent boy. So this is the predicate and John was the subject. And the verb is, is the finite. If we talk about the second type of sentence according to structure, that was compound sentence. I hope you have understood the simple one. Now let's talk about a compound sentence. A compound sentence has two or more coordinate clauses. Now what do we mean by this? The coordinate clauses are independent clauses. They are of equal rank and convey the complete meaning or sense by themselves. For example, I didn't like, this is a clause, the food, I didn't like, the, I'm sorry, I didn't like the food, this is one clause. But I ate, I ate everything. This is another clause. 
The above sentence consists of two independent clauses. I didn't like the food and I ate everything. This is absolutely clear. These clauses are independent. If you look at them, they give you a sense, a meaning independently. And can stand on their own to convey the meaning. They are connected by a coordinate conjunction. But to form a single sentence. Now we come to the third kind of sentence based on structure that is complex sentence. A complex sentence has only one independent clause and this is called the principal clause or rather we can even say the main clause and one or more dependent clauses called the subordinate clauses. The subordinate clauses are dependent on the principal clause to convey the meaning. That means, let me explain that a complex sentence will have one main clause and it will also have subordinate clause which is dependent on the main clause to give a complete meaning. Now example here, we rushed inside because it started to rain. This sentence also consists of two clauses. Number one, we rushed inside, which is the main clause. Because it started to rain, this is the reason here, which is a subordinate clause. The subordinate clause in this sentence is dependent on the main clause to convey its meaning. Therefore, this sentence is a complex sentence. Children, I hope you have understood the kinds of sentences. Let me recap the entire lesson for you in a couple of sentences. For example, for example, first of all, we did kinds of sentences which were based on their meanings and there were five kinds of them declarative or statements interrogative or questions imperative which means requests and commands exclamatory sentences which have strong feelings in it and we have an exclamation mark at the end last of all optative sentences which are strong desire The second thing that we have done in this lesson is kinds of sentences based on the structure. When we, do, when we talk about structure, we had already done in the last class as well, simple sentences, which has a single complete thought in it and has one finite word. And a simple sentence has only one subject and one predicate. The second type, set, type of sentence based on structure is compound sentence. Now what is the difference between a simple and a compound sentence? A compound sentence has two or more coordinate clauses. The coordinate clauses are independent clauses. They are of equal rank and convey the complete meaning or sense by themselves. If there are two coordinate uh, clauses, each one of them, if we read it independently, will give a complete meaning. But when we have more than two or more coordinate clauses, then we call, and each of them are independent as well, these clauses are independent and they convey the meaning. So, but they are connected with something. Both of them have to be connected with some word and we usually use a conjunction over there. 
when we join the two coordinate clauses with a conjunction we end up into a compound sentence this is a compound sentence the third one the last one rather is a complex sentence now what is the difference between a simple compound and now we have come to complex sentence what makes up a complex sentence a complex sentence has only one independent clause only one independent clause which we call as principal clause we can also call it as main clause and besides this we have one or more independent clauses called subordinate clauses the subordinate clauses are dependent on the main clause to convey the meaning is it clear so we have reviewed all these sentences by virtue of their meanings and secondly by their structure now children we will start with our written work all right children now we have come to the written part of the lesson you have understood the kinds and types of sentences we are going to begin with exercise a open up your book on page 2 exercise a let's read the caption first rearrange the following words in the proper order to make meaningful sentences use the appropriate punctuation marks where required children if you see party nice at time had she the the now we have to make a meaningful sentence by putting these words into proper order such as i am going to write on the board the first answer for you so that it will be a kind of guideline and we're going to put a full stop because this is simply a statement she had a nice time at the party is it clear to you children now i want you to do the rest of the sentences like this first write down the words as i have done in the first in the second line you will write down the answer of that make a complete sentence is it clear to you children all right children as i told you we have started with exercise a i have given you the example now i want you to complete exercise a b a on page 2 B on page three and C on page four. You have to complete all these three exercises in your notebook. I will also show you your notebook how you are going to begin your work. This is your notebook. Open it up. on the very first page you have index which you are going to fill first as far as page number is concerned i will i will show you from where you are going to number your pages 
turn the page again on the very first page from where the lines are starting you are going to write term 1 and the session have you all done it or you will do it likewise okay now turn your page leave the back part of it and then write down the heading syllabus as you go on adding the topics you can start writing one after the other then your actual written work should begin from here you will write down the date first and write down the topic as you can see i have put page number one over here now you can go on writing the page numbers and every page one two three likewise and start doing your work Wish you all the best.